right, guys. So everybody here in the Huntsman has, uh, you know, a beautiful hunting partner or a handsome hunting partner with six-pack abs. We got we we got people with dogs and every other every other hunting partner you can imagine. I had no hunting partner. I got my boy Joey. This is Joey. So just to let you know that I am the original Ted. I am the original Ted. This is my guy, Joey, my hunting partner. This is gonna be my hunting partner for the show. This guy doesn't need to eat. He doesn't need to drink any water. He doesn't need to go to the bathroom. Uh, he's not gonna scare away or spook away game. You guys better watch out because Ted Wallace and Joey are coming for you on the Huntsman. Welcome back to another episode of The Huntsman. We're very grateful you guys took time out of your busy evenings to join us, but we're gonna make it worth your while. As we teased last week in episode three, hunting in the United States is now starting to come in. So after months of watching our trail cams, going through Instagram and remembering good memories and lusting after other people's deer, we're finally having a chance to jump in the game ourselves. Not that we weren't happy for our friends to the north in Canada or in Europe, but we felt it was time to showcase what we had going on. Ted Wallace joined the cast when he decided to come on and pursue white-tailed deer. However, he had an opportunity to call an audible and go after a moose through putting in a tag. The question is, does he get one? Sarah and Cody Lawhorn decided to go after whitetail in their own area. We are also going to join Travis Glassman again as now Mule Deer is in for Kansas. So without any further ado, let's swing back and join Ted as he begins his saga. So this hunt started for me eight years ago when I first put in for the Maine moose tag. I've been hunting Maine for about 15 years, black bear hunting, and just love the state. I love the scenery, I love the, uh, the atmosphere, uh, I love the people. Uh, it was just a place I wanted to be, and maybe I was a little naive, but uh, I actually thought and I was confident that I, that I would get a tag. Uh, why I thought that, I, I don't know. I just, I was confident that I, that I would get a tag. And sure enough, uh, after a black bear hunt in Canada, I came home, I checked the lottery results, and there it was. I, uh, I landed a opportunity of a lifetime for an epic hunt that my friends and I never thought in a million years that I would land something like this. And uh, now it was a reality. So Jason and I drove up there, uh, we drove up to Maine, and uh, we headed out. It was a 10 hour, 10 hour drive, uh, the weather was perfect, no issues. All right, so we're real close. We're about an hour away from Eagle Lake, Maine, where uh, OMM Outfitters is located, uh, our outfitter and guide service. For the next few days, we're expecting some really good weather. Uh, it's supposed to drop down into the 20s and virtually no wind. So it, it's gonna be a home run. On Wednesday, it's supposed to rain a little. So hopefully we can get in uh, two good days of hunting. All right, here we are. Pulling up, just arrived, Eagle Lake Inn. My guide was Tom Hamilton. Great guy, great personality, a lot of fun to be around. Knew his stuff, I mean really knew his stuff. Later that day before we turned in, uh, I had to go shoot my bow. So it was just, just, a, just getting a little dark right after dinner and uh, Tom wanted me to shoot. After that we had dinner. Got, uh, we were cutting it up a little bit at camp, and we finally hit the rack. So we were parked on this road, and right to our right was a cut, uh, an old logging uh, cut off this road. And right in front of us, about 100 yards, was where we were going to go down to that pond and hunt where Tom saw the sun. I get out of the car, and I take some scent killer, and I start spraying myself down with scent killer, and I hear uh, a moose call. 
I hear Tom start calling. So and I hear the 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 moose uh, calling back. Now I don't know if it's a cow. I don't know if it's a bull. I don't. I haven't even seen it yet. I don't know what's going on. So I kind of lift up on my toes to see what's going on, and I hit. I could see the crown between the antlers of the bull moose over the berm, and I hit it with the rangefinder, and it's 40 yards. So it's close, and it comes together perfectly, perfectly.
Jason was shaking, and Jason uh, shut the camera off uh, right after the shot. Got a little bit of footage. I had some on a GoPro, but at that point, it really didn't matter. About a half an hour later, went to the cut, went up, and we saw some blood. So we followed the blood to the end of, uh, at the end of the cut, there was a trail, uh, probably about five feet wide. And Jason uh, spotted the arrow uh, with the lighted knock uh, wedged in between uh, this bush. He stood up in front of me. He was standing right there, wobbling around. He came down here and fell down. Oh my God. OMM, baby. <laughs> 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 that is a stud. Are you kidding me? Look at the folds in those palms. Look at that. That's an old bow. I think so, yeah. See how, brow see how bladed off he is on the top? He's folded. At that point, we walked into the woods, you know, uh, walked in about 10 feet, and I put my hands on this animal, and that's when it hit me. That's when it really hit me emotionally what I did. All right, guys, we're here at Eagle Lake, Maine, getting it done. OMM Outfitters, uh, Team Rack Life, we're here. Uh, I shot this bull this morning, probably about 15 minutes into the hunt. Uh, came down the trail, and uh, Tom Hamilton, the guide, uh, laid down some cow calls. This bull was with a cow, came in, about 40 yards shot with my bow. It was a fantastic hunt. I mean, this guy, Tom Hamilton, have his, has his stuff together. And that's it. I mean, that's all. That's all I can say. I hope. I hope I didn't bore you guys with this with this video. But this is from my heart, and uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, Sons of Fall, uh, I really thank you guys, Joe Port, for giving me the opportunity, and Brian Henley, and uh, Paul Lawler. Thank you. Thank you guys for the help. And I hope this. Uh, I hope this works out. And I hope you guys really like this video. Got all the camera gear already ready and uh, loaded in the truck. Ready to rock and roll. Yep, pretty much ready to go. We're getting ready to leave, so I gotta be in stealth mode. Gotta get my hardy face paint on.
maybe 20 yards. Gave me a broadside shot, and I just took the shot. Fingers crossed I got him. It looked like a good shot. She can see that. Oh my gosh. We've been looking for my buck for a couple hours now. Haven't been able to find them. Lost a track of blood, so that's all the looking we're gonna do today. We're gonna come back tomorrow and maybe the next day and continue to look, maybe look for some buzzards. Really hope we find them. Really bummed right now. Looked like a good shot. I think he ducked a little, jumped the string. We'll just have to watch the footage and see. Fingers crossed we find them. It's been a couple days since I shot that awesome 10 point. We still haven't found him. Super disappointed about it. It rained that night and then the next day when we went in, there was no, no way we were gonna find any blood. I mean, I'm very disappointed. It's all I think about right now. It was, it was the perfect setup. He came in to 20 yards, wasn't even alerted. Everything just went so smoothly and I play it over and over again in my mind and it just, it just doesn't make sense to me why it didn't work out. Hard work pays off, so I'm not going to give up. I'm going to continue to work just as hard and dedicate as much time as I can to being out in the woods, and I'm going to get it done. I had given up all hope on finding my buck that I shot early season. The blood trail ended about 100 yards in. Couldn't find any more sign of him, and it rained that next day. We weren't getting him on any trail cam picks, so I was concentrating on some other nice shooter bucks that we had. And uh, lo and behold, I got some pretty exciting news today. So my husband Cody and my brother, they were out hanging a tree stand for gun season. And I was at work, unfortunately, and I got the call that they found my buck laying in the woods. I'm gonna get my hands on this buck for the first time. In the video, he looked like he had a really nice pinpoint rack. So let's find out what he looks like. Oh my gosh, oh wow, look at him. Oh man, I can't even believe this right now. Wow, he is massive. Look at this chocolate 10 point. He's gonna look really good on the wall. Definitely getting this bad boy down in. My biggest bow kill to date, probably ever. Like I'm, I'm thinking he's at least in the 140s, maybe 150. Wish we would have found him sooner, but at least finding him in the end, I'm happy about that. I wasn't having a lot of other opportunities this season, so I couldn't be more blessed and thankful to find him. Oh, this is awesome. So happy. Well, over my shoulder, there is a really good bluff that mule deer have bedded in historically and it's something I check almost on a daily basis during the rut. Up top there's a green wheat field and they've been uh, feeding up there and there's been bucks pushing does up there the last few days. We hunted in a tree stand just over the hill to our west the other night and we did see some deer up there but there was a smaller buck and uh, I think since there's been a big dog that's came in and ran him off and uh, we just caught a glimpse of a real big typical and uh, not sure how heavy he is we think he's got an extra point he's got real good sets of forks on the fronts and the back and uh, we're just gonna let him get settled in here the wind is kind of blowing straight at him so we're gonna have to take the valley to the bottom and to the west and get to the east of or to the west of him and make a circle and then maybe scale some of those uh, some of these ridges coming back at him so <clears throat> We got a, a fun afternoon ahead of us, it looks like. It is 1127, so midday, they're getting ready to settle in, it looks like. And uh, I think he's gonna be rutting these does in these canyons probably most of the day. So I'll, we're gonna take old Doreen along with us here and uh, 
hopefully get within 100 yards, pop it up, and make somebody curious enough to come take a look. So, pretty pumped about it. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. The Sons of Fall staff and cast proudly work with the finest in the industry. German Precision Optics, tough, technical, brilliant. Hoyt Bows, get serious, get Hoyt. Badlands Backpacks, become a hide and seek master. Victory Archery, the carbon arrow experts. Fourth Arrow, when precision, strength, and performance are everything. It's over, dude. Did you get it? He's going down right there. Dude, did you see what happened? My knock, my arrow fell off my knock. I could not hardly, like, I was trying to get another arrow and I decided just to try to slide the other arrow back on the knock. Oh my goodness, what just happened? I'll tell you what I've learned over the years. When stupid stuff like that happens, if you just stick with it. And here's the arrow. And it is Victory Vap TKO Smoke City with the dead meat on the front. That should have ate him up like a redneck picnic, right? As Waddell would say. Well, 
This makes for a heck of a memorable year. This is an awesome, awesome hunt. Again, thank you, Jared, for coming along and filming. You laid down some epic footage there. This is my buddy, J-Rod. The one-two duo on filming and killing, I'll tell you that. God's fun, man. <laughs> what are we going to do now? I don't, I don't know. We take out big mule deer, big elk. It doesn't matter. It's fun. Oh, man. you got to love the country. And there you have it, episode four is in the books. If that doesn't get your heart pumping, I don't know what will. I also know one of two things are happening right now. You're either not a sportsman, or two, you're flatlined and you just need to dial 911. As we went through editing and producing this episode, there was one word that seemed to resonate with us that personified the cast members as a whole, and that was perseverance. Ted believed and had faith that he was someday going to go on that moose hunt and continue to put in for a tag every year. He was rewarded with that. Sarah and Cody never gave up looking for that buck. I won't forget when Sarah called and explained what happened and her disappointment in not finding it and her commitment to continuing to look for that buck. Two things stood out. One was her passion for the sport. She was more than just someone on Instagram trying to peddle goods. And two, her respect for the animal. Either way, it was rewarded when she found that buck. And what a buck. I would have been happy to have taken that one this year. Then we had Travis, who at the height of the moment, the moment of truth, had an equipment malfunction. He persevered through and was able to harvest an amazing mule deer. So if I had to give an award out to these guys, it would be the award of perseverance. What do you think about them? Go to www.sonsoffall.com and check these guys out. Don't forget that they are playing for charity. While we have a production crew producing this show, these guys are self-filming and turning in the film. They want to share their stories with you and play for their charity. So if someone's reached out to you over Instagram or some social media platform and you have a connection with them, or if there's someone you connect with just as a sportsman, get online and vote for them because that's very important. And until next time, I'm Joel Port with Sons of Fall, where we're wishing you a safe and happy season.